Hi, everybody. Welcome to the RV Podcast, episode 409. And this week we talk about the pros and the cons of RV land ownership. Hello, everybody. I'm Mike Wedlin, and this is my lifelong traveling companion and my bride, Jennifer. And this is another edition of the RV Podcast, coming to you from inside our RV as it is parked on the Loblolly Ridge. That's the name of the property we just uh, uh, completed developing into kind of like a little private RV resort near Linden, Tennessee, in Middle Tennessee. We've been here a little over a week now, and it's... Uh, it's it's awesome. Should I say it's growing on us? <laughs> it has grown on us. Yeah, we were going to actually only be here a few days, and we've stayed over. We got to take a quick trip down to Florida for a couple of days, uh, and then we're coming right back for some more time. But uh, this has been awesome. Uh, we bought this property back in uh, in late 2021, and we've been since then developing it into three little private RV spots and. Oh my gosh! You can have to you have to look at the video on uh, on YouTube that we put up this past weekend, and you can you can see what we what we like it. But we're sure having a good time. And I think what I'm liking right now, we've got the window open. It's not so incredibly hot today, as we are recording this, and uh, the wind is blowing through the trees, and uh, it's lovely. The Loblolly pine trees, which is uh, why we named it Loblolly Ridge. Hey, the Hershey RV Show is just um, a little over a month away. It uh, actually opens to the public in a month on uh, on Wednesday, September 14th. It runs until Sunday the 18th. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, we're going and we are going to be doing meet and greets with all of uh, our friends and fans and followers mm -hmm. pretty much every day of the show at different spots. And two different live Ask Us Anything appearances. Yep. We'll be at the um, at the Keystone RV display area, and I think that's in area B2. We're also doing and uh, we're doing that on, at 10 a.m. on Friday and Saturday, and then uh, at 2 p.m. Wednesday, opening day, we'll be uh, doing a meet and greet at the Battleborn uh, battery display. And we've got a couple others that we'll uh, we'll be talking about too. So we'll we'll put if you're a subscriber to our RV Lifestyle newsletter, we will put our complete schedule for Hershey in next week's edition. And uh, if you're there, we would indeed love to see you. Um, and we're gonna, we're looking forward to doing like we do our Sunday night Ask Us Anything uh, live show on YouTube and Facebook. We stream it every Sunday night, but we're going to do it live. From the uh, the Hershey RV show at the Keystone booth on on uh, Friday and Saturday, and that'll be really fun. So, come by, say hi, and you'll you'll see us there. And we're uh, we're looking forward to Hershey. It's always a uh, it's always a great show. It's uh, we have a new giveaway too to announce. Oh wow, I forgot about that. Yes, we do. This giveaway is going to be a Waggle Pet Monitor. We've given a couple of these away over the last couple of years. They're very popular. Uh, if you travel in an RV with a dog or a cat or a pet, and you know one of the things you worry about is while you're away, maybe out for dinner or grabbing lunch or, or just uh, looking at a museum or something, and you've left the your pet back in the RV with the air conditioning on, what happens if the air conditioner breaks? So, the Waggle Pet Monitor is just an awesome device that uh, will keep track of the temperature uh, in your RV. It will send you an alert. On your phone on your cell phone uh, it is a really awesome thing we're giving away a complete system free and uh, we'll announce that in a couple of weeks you can enter that contest by going uh, it is free when I say it's a contest just enter it and yeah. you're in you can enter as many times as you want as many times as you have time to enter just so. go <laughs> uh, yeah, rvlifestyle.com slash sweepstakes we'll put the description below and uh, maybe you can win one of those. But we've used them now for a number of years with uh, Bo, and it really does give you peace of mind for your pet. I cannot bring myself to leave Bo when it's hot. Even though the air conditioning is on, I don't know if something will happen to that box or if somebody would trip on the wire yeah. for some reason. Just something might happen because 
these things, RVs, really heat up in a short period of time. It's like a car. Yeah, it is. So, you know, having that assurance of knowing what the, the temperature is inside at all times is just is just a great feature to have. And hey, okay, we're giving one free, and it's a it's a great system. It's the uh, Waggle uh, Pet Monitor. It's called the Waggle Pet Monitor 4G. Uh, GPS unit with uh, with GPS uh, data as well so anyway you can learn all about that enter it and if you go to rvlifestyle.com slash sweepstakes you can also if you just want to buy one you can get for, during the, the length of this contest you can get one for 50% off 50% wow, off that's a good deal it's a really good deal and uh, our uh, our audience has loved it they're extremely popular and we're delighted to, to do that again for the Waggle people because it's a product we use and we, we believe in. We believe you have to have some kind of system to protect your pet. Yep. So if uh, you, you want to check it, rvlifestyle.com slash sweepstakes. There's lots of RV news. You want to start off? We've got uh, yeah, uh, lots of I, news and a couple of really significant stories that we want to talk about. Yeah, I'm going to start off with this one. Uh, a Minnesota woman is suing Walmart for wrongful death alleging his policy of allowing people like RVers to overnight in his parking lot led to the death of her children in a parking lot fire. This is a tragic story. It's a very tragic story. A woman parked at Walmart in August of 2019 and left her napping children ages uh, 6 and 9 in her van when she went into the store. While she was gone, a man in an RV from California started cooking on a hot plate, starting a fire. The fire spread to several nearby vehicles, including her van, where her sleeping children were. Her six-year-old died in the fire, and her nine-year-old suffered extensive burns and lung damage. The 72-year-old RV owner was charged with second-degree manslaughter, but the mother is blaming Walmart, too, for allowing people to overnight in, uh, in their parking lots. And uh, many, needless to say, many RVers are following the story carefully because RVers, we depend on places like Walmart for a quick overnight stay when we're traveling distances. You know, this is uh, heartbreaking that a child died and that the other child, serious injury. And a six and a nine-year-old, I would take them in with me. I wouldn't leave them in the RV for fear of uh, people that steal kids. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I mean, that's number one, and number two, this uh, seventy-two-year-old cooking on a hot plate. He was charged with second-degree manslaughter. Well, we don't have all the. We information. We don't have all the information. So, this is a very bizarre, very bizarre yeah. story. So there was some, some uh, other reason why he'd be charged with manslaughter with that, uh, and then the whole question of well, why did she leave her women, her kids, kids. in that van? And why did it spread to several vehicles? I uh, mean, yes, this, so, there's a lot of questions that that doesn't answer. So we don't know all the details. We don't know. This, but we do point out also this happened in 2019. This is now 2022. Uh, a lot of time went down by after this incident before the suit was filed. So uh, whatever it is, we'll be watching it because we certainly don't want to see Walmart change its, its policy about overnights. But things like this, too many of these kind of cases, and you can see it would. But tragedy on, on all rounds. Big story out of uh, New uh, New Mexico that will at least have people talking, and this involves a Texas guy who was doing what he calls cowboy camping. You know what cowboy camping is? Camping out under the stars, yeah. I would imagine. Yeah, uh, we used to call it uh, dirt bagging, but it's basically no shelter, just throwing a blanket or a sleeping bag and sleeping on the ground under the stars cowboy camping well he was in new mexico this texas guy and he was camping last week and he woke up he said he heard some kind of a of a loud sniffing noise and before he knew it he felt something around his head and it was the jaws of a black bear uh, the black bear either liked what he had for dinner or else liked his toothpaste because i guess they're attracted to toothpaste yeah he, some... he okay. probably didn't brush his teeth well off i don't know yeah but the guy screamed, and that startled the bear, and the bear let go and, and left. Uh, and he went over to his friend, and uh, his friend took him to a hospital. And, I mean, he got 16 stitches, so mm -hmm. that was not a pleasant thing. But 
it's kind of an example if you're camping in the open uh, on the ground like our cowboy camper there um, or even if you're in a tent you need to be very very careful when you're in bear country and have absolutely no trace of food toothpaste anything out bears are so sensitive to smell they can smell things from you know a mile away uh, there was just in New Hampshire uh, last week a, a campground had to be cold, co closed because uh, a lot of bear activity uh, attracted to a campground because of the smells. So be very aware of that and be careful. You know, it's so romantic, the notion, and it's fun to camp out under the stars. We used to do that. We used to be in a tent and we'd camp out and it's, it's, it is fun with the flaps open and just the screen, but... Yeah, in bear country? Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we just met a couple a couple of weeks ago we interviewed and i remember they were sleeping in tents and they just switched uh, they switched to trailers and the reason why is because a bear had come and grabbed somebody's cooler and was munching on it outside their tent and that that's it no more tents and also that story i'll never forget is somebody was sleeping in their tent and the bear came and sat on the, on the person's head you know it just came and sat down on their tent i guess it looked like a log or a rock yeah this is a couple in uh we were in yellowstone and this a glacier. happened yeah a glacier a glacier yeah. national park and and uh, she felt something on her head it started pushing she thought it was her husband doing something outside and he's right next to her and she pushes and she hears the bear go whoom, whoom, or something <laughs> <laughs> it was a bear so if you're in yeah. bear country yeah be careful i mean i like a little something between me yeah i mean it, i like tents but be careful yeah uh, Hey, a very serious story. If you have been camping with your dog in northern Michigan this summer, listen up. Okay, uh, so if you've been camping in northern Michigan, veterinarians want you to be on the lookout for a mysterious illness that is uh, making dogs sick and in some cases killing them. The Otsego County Animal Shelter says that in the past two months, many dogs have gotten sick and at least 20 have died from symptoms that include bloody stools, vomiting, and acting lethargic. If your dog seems to be infected, uh, get help as quick as you can. Now, uh, young dogs seem to be the ones most affected by mm -hmm. this. And uh, Otsego County, that area, uh, we're talking, uh, they found this disease in places like Grand Traverse, the Grand Traverse area up in Michigan, right up in here, uh, along the Lake Michigan, Grand Traverse Bay shoreline. Uh, Gaylord, which is right about here, Indian River up towards the Straits. So all over that area, this thing is going on. It's very serious. And we also heard about a similar one in uh, new, uh, that our son's dogs are both sick right now in the Nashville area. Yeah, we are 90 miles out of Nashville in our, our property here, which is a reason that we bought this property, to be close to our son and his family. And we can't go visit our son right now because their, their dogs, dogs are both sick. And it's not parvo. It's parvo-like. So they're not sure what it is, but dogs are getting extremely sick from it. They're so. getting pneumonia. So it's like a cattle cough is what they have in Nashville. Yeah. So we really want to go visit our kids, and we can't take our dog there. No. So just be aware of that. Boy. Uh, uh, just one uh, lost, uh, one more story, last story, and this is uh, kind of uh, for your advisory and just to kind of maybe look at your RV camping calendar. Uh, right now, uh, one of the biggest seasons that has happened over the past couple of years for camping is fall. And across the country, many, many campgrounds are planning fall and harvest time and Halloween themed events. And I just tell you that because you might think because the kids are back in school now in many parts of the country or about to be that it's free, you know, you can get lots of space. Just understand that this has now become a very popular time. Many campgrounds, special activities in September, October, almost every weekend sells out in some areas. It's fun. It's fun just to walk through. <laughs> Sometimes it's costumes. Oh, yeah decorated uh, yep. campsites and trick-or-treating so candy so make your reservations a little bit early. don't be surprised don't be surprised all right we're gonna take a quick break and when we come back we're gonna talk about some of the things that we have learned the pros and the cons about uh, owning your own RV land uh, we are loving the experience but there are some things that we want to pass along to you and share from our experience in developing our dream property here in Tennessee. So stay with us, we'll be right back. Tired of overcrowded campgrounds, competing for reservations, paying high fees for sites? Well, ownership is an emerging trend in RVing that might be right for you. 
It sure was for us. Jennifer and I bought some land just west of Nashville, Tennessee, in an incredible collection of mountaintop RV properties called the Woodlands at Buffalo River. These are 5 to 62 acre properties that allow RVs year-round starting at $79,900. We loved it. The scenery is breathtaking and you own it outright. It's not a timeshare. It's your property, your way. You can landscape, garden, bring your pets, build what you want to build. There's high-speed internet available and it is so private. It's a great place to make your home base. No more calling around for reservations, and it's ready whenever you want. They're selling these on September 3rd by appointments, 5 to 62 acres from $79,900. There's financing and big discounts on multi-lot packages. For information, visit rvlakes.com. That's rvlakes.com. When we're asked what's the most important modification we made to our RV, it's an easy answer. Battleborn batteries. Battleborn batteries are quality, safe, reliable lithium batteries that allow us to stay out there off the grid longer. Lithium batteries charge faster, they charge fuller, they're longer lasting, they're maintenance free. And battleborn batteries are protected by a 10 year guarantee. Now, in our case, they just dropped into the existing AGM batteries that we have. And they'll probably be the same on your rig, too. Battleborn battery experts can get those in your rig just like they did with ours. They can also match you up with the right cabling, the inverter, the charger, the solar controller, everything. Jennifer and I swear by our Battleborn batteries. They allow us to boondock off the grid. Check them out. Go to rvlifestyle.com slash lithium rvlifestyle.com slash lithium. Welcome back. And now it's time for our topic of the week, this uh, growing trend of owning your own property. We have now owned this property since November of uh, 2021. One. And uh, it was kind of a dream for us. We've been looking for a number of years. We really wanted to find a, some property with some room. And we bought just five acres. It's kind of on a mountaintop here in Tennessee. Uh, those of you watching the video version, I'll show some video and you can see how, how wooded it is and the beautiful terrain. And then again, you can look at our YouTube uh, video uh, on our property as well. But uh, So I'm not going to talk so much about what we did and how we made this property, but I want to talk about what we've learned because we've heard so much from so many of you all over the country saying, where do we find property like this? What are the, some of the things that you've learned? And so we're going to just share um, a half dozen pros and a half dozen cons because just as RVing is not for everyone, owning RV land is not for every RVer. Uh, and I think it's really important. Now, this is a trend. We have visited places like this in Florida, in, um, in uh, Alabama, a couple of these places in Tennessee. We're about ready to go visit one in, in Arizona. And the thing they have in common is these are not uh, dedicated RV campgrounds. We're not going to talk about those. They've, they have been selling lots for years, but this is those are campgrounds where you're all right next to anybody. These are usually multi-acre parcels uh, or super large size lots. You may not have anybody right next to you. You have some open space. This is the kind of, of trend and people are keeping their RVs on it. Some of them may plan to eventually build something on it, but uh, uh, these uh, are generally the trend that we're seeing is for larger uh, uh, with acreage size RV property. Uh, we like to call it breathing room. Yeah. And it literally is breathing room because how many times have you been in a campground and they've got a fire? And uh, Yep, that's the first pro. So we're going to talk about the pros uh, and we have a half dozen of each. So the first pro about buying it is just that. You have your own breathing room. You have breathing room. You don't have to worry about campfires all night or people talking and being loud. You've got some space. You've got space for your slides. You can extend your slides. Uh, you've got room for your uh, truck, or if you have a fifth wheel or a trailer. Uh, or another tow vehicle. Tow vehicle. You've just got room it, and, for your you stuff. Know, and for example, here, just before we started to uh, record this podcast, we were both out there in chairs, look at us, our gravity chair, look at the sky chair. And we were watching the wind sigh through those loblolly pines. And we haven't heard any, we haven't seen a single person. We haven't heard a truck. We haven't heard another vehicle. 
it's just been really peaceful and that breathing room we this is the first time we've really stayed without having a lot of projects or just for a minute we've actually been able to decompress and and that breathing room is oh my gosh so that's that's number one mm -hmm. on our on our pro list and um and yeah the, this big thing that it's yours it's your property and that's number two the number two this is this is our land and we can do whatever we want pretty much to it now we chose uh, to to find a place that did not have an HOA not that HOAs are bad no um, but this is these are pretty wide open spaces can I say the good thing is we don't have an HOA the bad thing is we don't have an HOA <laughs> yeah. well yeah I mean if, if everything went you know kaflui and the only thing you can't put in here is and that's from a, a local ordinance is like a single wide unit and that's because in the county they they had some single wides that you know people just abandoned and all that so no that's i don't think that's going to happen because these <laughs> parcels are are sold and people spend money to develop them and all that stuff but uh, nobody's telling us that we have to build we can build if we want to and we may we may put up a barn dominium someday a lot of people are putting up barn dominiums we may put up a shed a permanent shed if I get an ATV, something I can lock in there and, and all that stuff. <laughs> what we need is an ATV. <laughs> oh, we do need an ATV. Um, this is ours. We can stay. We know we have a spot. Yes. Right? We can stay as long as we want. We can we, let the RV stay as long as we want. Yep, with no storage fees. Right. You know, that's one thing this is saving us on. Uh, we have had to keep our, our fifth wheel, which we're in now, uh, in a storage lot back in Michigan and that costs, you know, a hundred and something every month, you know, and that's, you know, that adds up. So we don't have to pay for that. Um, you know, and like we said, you can, you can build on it or you don't have to build. It's your property. If we want to get a, build a little cabin, we can do that. If we want to build a house. So, so the two reasons, you know, you have breathing room, it's yours. And then connected right with it, what we've been talking about is you can do what you want with this land so that's number three so that's again assuming, assuming hoas no and HOA. no zoning regulations uh you can landscape this you can plant a garden yeah uh, you can plant a garden um you can hunt on it if that's allowed we can in this county we can if we want um and uh you can you can we could carve out our own atv trails see that's why i need <laughs> it uh in, on our five acres um you know, it's just it's just our land. I'm going to put up some ham radio antennas, and, and it's ours. So, so that's that's reason number three. What's number four? Uh, number four is talking about you can invite friends to come and yeah. stay with you. Yeah, yeah, and we did that. We did that the on uh, I don't know two three nights ago. We met some of our neighbors that joined our property down the holler and up the other side of the ridge. Uh, uh, we we share a boundary them. line with them. Yep. Yeah. And they came over, and then uh, our friends, uh, that was uh, Brad and Mary, really? and then we had uh, Jerry and Susie, who we've known from some of our gatherings, who own property uh, on, in the same general area. They came over, and then uh, we Jerry had and Jerry, Jerry and Sherry, who from have Ohio. another lot from Ohio. So we had, uh, had six other folks over. We cooked out. We ate together. We sat around at night, watched the stars, started a fire. Um, and we can invite friends. We we actually made three sites here for ourselves and two guests if we want. So we can invite friends to come camping and then they have a place to stay. We can allow our friends to stay here when they're passing through. Uh, and it just is so, it's just so nice to say, hey, come and stay with us for a while. You don't have to worry about getting reservations, just just come. So, mm -hmm. so that's, that's number five, four. Number five. Uh, you could rent this if you wanted to rent out campsites. You could, if as long as it's yep. you know no our, ordinance against it. Our our neighbor to the um, to the south is uh, Troy, and he is building uh, several sites that he is going to rent out. Uh, it's not going to be quite a campground, but he's going to make nice little kind of boutique little wooded getaways for RVers, and he's thinking about doing that. He's planning that now, and. Some of our other uh, friends in this thing said they may rent it as well. Mm -hmm. We don't have any intentions of doing that with ours, but we could. And you could, you know, I mean, you could get 50 bucks a night for, for this. So um, so that's one thing mm -hmm. that we, we're thinking about. That's that's reason five. 
And reason six. I think this was the most uh, very important, ranked right up there reason. It's an investment. It is an investment. So one thing God's not making any more of is land. No, he's not. Uh, and, and real estate reliably appreciates. Uh, so I, I think, you know, uh, this is, the, and this whole area we're in that we happen to choose is called Nashville's Big Backyard. Nashville is expanding out. It's the fastest, most prosperous uh, growing city, I think, in the country these days. Real estate vice prices there are going through the roof. They're still affordable here. Um, I don't ever see this area becoming like a little Nashville, but I do see it becoming a really nice area of mountaintop cabins and cottages and nice uh, RV lots. I, I think I, I heard that Nashville has the highest inflation yes. of the whole country. I mean, that it's growing like crazy, growing like a weed. So those are six reasons why it makes sense. It did to us anyway. It may not to you. Some people still have a lot of trouble. Now, we need to also say before we get into the cons of this, we still are doing RV traveling. We will probably leave our fifth wheel here on our property most of the time. And we are picking up at Hershey. That's one of the reasons we're excited about going to Hershey is we're picking up our brand new Unity FX Leisure Travel Van, our 2023 model, and we're picking that up. So we, we can see us using that to travel here and then use it to, to explore this region to go cross country, but having this as a home base, I mean, this fifth wheel really is like a cabin on wheels. We just, it's, we are so it's, spoiled. It, it really feels like home. Yeah, our, it is home. Our one son who doesn't like camping, every time we talk to him and face Facebook, FaceTime him, he looks around and he says, that's really nice. Yeah, yeah. That's, you see <laughs> it's this roomy. background here. And our other kids, our other two kids, uh, and the grandkids, they all like camping. So they, they like they camping. Love camping. So, uh, so I just want to get that clear so you know that we haven't given up traveling. We will be doing a ton of traveling, and, and we'll start in just a, a month when we pick up our new Class C. We did sell the Wonder, by the way. Our Wonder has sold. All right, so you heard the pros. But Some there, of the pros. Yeah, there's more, but those are the six that we can easily identify. What are the cons well, of owning RV Share property? some of the cons. Uh, it can be expensive. That's number one. Mm -hmm. Yes, it can. The, uh, the property, if you're in a desirable area, it's going to cost you money yes, to uh, get that. And, and, you know, because somebody has already come in and they've macked it all out and they're selling. This is raw land that we bought. So when we bought it, it was completely tree covered. And, uh, you know, it was, it was it, the land... They had it bounded out into five acres, but uh, it, it, it's expensive, you know, uh, it, it, and it's, you know, they start these prices, they're still selling. I think they're doing a sale in on Labor Day Saturday that weekend, and I think they start at seventy nine nine for a five acre parcel. So that gives you a ballpark of what the land costs, and they go up from there, but seven, and that depends, you know, on how, what the, what the land is like. So... It can be expensive you know you're not picking this stuff up for for free uh, and because it's in a development there are roads access roads to get to um, and that costs money for the developer and all that stuff but just understand that land can be expensive it's not it's not cheap and it can get very involved once you buy this land because you need to put in a no, normally i think everybody needs to put in a road yes. and then what are you going to cover that road with and that's that's cut down trees yep that is the second con is the cost that you will have now after you buy the land to develop it the way you want mm -hmm. to get your water your sewage and your electricity in and if you have to build a driveway, you know, an access road uh, into your property, you'll have to do that. Like you say, you'll have to cut the trees down. You'll have to put a surface on it. Um, you, you're going to get involved in that. And you can't forget taxes. Yeah, um, taxes. We're pretty lucky here in Tennessee because our taxes for this five acres is about $545 a year. But... But the biggest thing is, you know, what are you going to cover that driveway in? Mm -hmm. Your contractor is probably going to have to help you find an electrician, uh, some excavators, all of that stuff. And people are always asking us, how much does it cost to develop? I think a, I'm, we just want to not mislead anybody here. As we said that the land is expensive, developing it is expensive. 
you can probably figure close, if not equal to, but close to half of the cost of the land is what you're going to spend in developing it. Now, maybe a third. Maybe a third. Now, in our case, for example, um, I think we can tell. Right, we paid eighty nine nine for this this R five acres. We paid eighty nine nine, um, and I'm not going to go into every cent we spent because there's a lot of stuff that you know we spent that we're not even going to talk about. But we don't want to talk about. But it the key we thing, we got ahead of ourselves. <laughs> we, yeah, we made three spots, three full spots. Most people won't need three spots. We made full hookups on each spot. We put in a extra large septic that that. So in case we want to build a house, or yep. somebody wants to build a house someday, the septic, the system, septic is ready for a three-bedroom house. It's a selling point in case we sell it. You know, so, someday it will be sold. Yeah, if you're just going to do an RV, you might not need anything that big. Right. But we put in a tank, you know, that will handle a three-bedroom house. So you can have have people install all this stuff, and maybe you could do some of it, but you know. And then electricity, electricity, uh, how far is electricity, uh, where is the nearest electricity? In our case, it happens to be on the road, about 300 uh, feet or so from where we've set up our campsites. But you got are you going to go overhead with that? That's cheaper, it's uglier. You're going to go underground, you got to have conduit. So just understand that developing the land, is, and it's not something you can just say, well, here's what we spend and that's what you're going to spend. Uh, water. We have water that happens to run city water right on the road. That's why we picked this parcel because water's right out in front and we just had to tap in. But if you're going to build a well, if you have to drill a well, as many people do, mm -hmm. that can cost anywhere from 11000 10 11000 to 18000 depending on how deep they have to go. And it, every parcel is different. So our point is that's a pretty big con. The cost of the land and the involvement of the development. So, you know, um, I'm back to my thing about, you know, figure a third to a half of whatever you spent in the land is what it's going to cost to develop it. Unless you have the equipment and know how to do it yourself. Unless you just want a boondock. Yeah. Um, the third thing, we want to talk again about sewer and septic fields because those are big, uh, are big, that's a big con for a lot of people. You have to have somewhere to do it. You, I suppose you don't. You could just you know, camp for three or four days and then find a dump and move your RV, but... Uh, They're going to charge you, like if you go to a campground, to use their dump. Yes, you, you're you going to have to hook up someplace. Uh, not, you just don't bury a septic tank, you know, you have to have a septic field, field that has to be engineered. So, just be aware that... Uh, and, and we hit those three cons right at the thing. The cost of land, the involvement of developing it, and the importance of... Uh, of, of uh, you know, serigs and septic. Um, and with that, again, you have to install those utilities yourself. So uh, those are big things. Uh, internet. What are you going to do for internet? Sometimes cellular stuff will work, but sometimes not. Maybe Starlink will work if you have a clear enough view of the north side. In our case, a big draw for us here is that broadband fiber internet in the middle of the woods is available. Uh, and then um, we should also talk about the fifth con on this thing, which is you got to deal with local governments and permits are needed. Here, the local government has been absolutely awesome and Amazing. wonderful. Yeah, we are not used to such speedy service. Can I tell about this, the sign thing? So we're on, we're off a road, and uh, it's a county road, and this is a very small county we're in. It's only a population of the, of the nearest city in Linden is a thousand. And maybe a, not that much more people live in the county, but there's no sign on the road. Somebody stole the sign. And uh, since we've been, we're inviting some friends and I've got some, having some, had some stuff delivered while we're here, I called up the county road guy and I said, hey, you know, we live on this road and somebody stole the sign. There's no sign. He said, oh, yeah, that happens. Okay, well, we'll get to that. And I figure I'm used to dealing with government. I made that call when I was in town. We were, you were working out at the gym. Had a couple of little errands to run. And uh, we came back 20 minutes later to our property and he and another guy were already out there putting in a new sign. Uh, but, you know, that's not true in every county and every jurisdiction. You might have to wait. You've got to know that you just can't do this, that you have to have particularly the sewage and then electricity is pretty important. You need permits and there's a process that you have to go through. 
So those are the five, five of the cons. And then there's one last one that we, we need to talk about too. You need security. We put gates up. We didn't want to put up gates, but we decided that we better. Yep. And, uh, you, you know, I'm, we're going to be leaving stuff here. This is a very low crime area. The neighbors watch out for each other. That's really fun with meeting all the neighbors who are in the same boat, moving in and getting their RVs here. We all keep track of everything. But um, you do have to have some kind of security. Uh, so we've put in gates and we've put in locks on all of our all of our utilities. So you can't have any poachers. Not that we even think that's a possibility, but you want to take care of it. And you do have to mark your property as private uh, if you want to keep trespassers out or if lawsuits. somebody should come in and to avoid a lawsuit. Again, we don't anticipate that happening here. But, um, you, you know, you, you, this is a litigious society, as we've talked about. So one of the things we learned is there's a thing called the purple ring, the purple band rule, which is kind of a universal sign of private property, no trespassing. You do also have to have a sign that explains that that's what that purple band means, and you put it on the boundaries of your lot and uh, put a purple uh, paint band around a tree. And uh, that, that, so we did that. But we have gates and locks on the gates, and, um, and you have to secure it. We're going to put all this stuff in the show notes for this episode. So uh, I hope you, we helped you with that. And, uh, you know, but do your homework. Just like when people say, oh, I want to go be an RVer. We get stuff from people who say, yep, my husband or my boyfriend or my girlfriend and I are going to go be live in an RV. Well, don't. Not until you've done your homework. And uh, it's the same with buying land. Uh, it's expensive. But um, so far, after what we have spent and, and all the involvement, we've had a lot of fun. And it's really nice. It's really nice. It is. All right. A couple of your questions. We're going to take a quick break. Let us take a drink of water and catch our breaths. We'll be right back. When we're on a road trip, we always seem to find a way to stop at a Camping World Center. There are over 225 Camping World locations across the country, and there's always one close by when we need parts and accessories for our RV or just want to shop. In fact, uh, we have so much fun with uh, Camping World, and as we talk about it as one of our sponsors, they have agreed to offer a 10% discount if you use the coupon code RVLIFESTYLE10 when you buy $99 or more in merchandise. You'll find everything you want from outdoor furniture and appliances, the ones you see us use in our videos and that we talk about here in the podcast. RV extras that include everything from camping chairs to fire pits, electrical accessories, must-have gadgets. Check them all out. And again, don't forget, use the coupon code RVLIFESTYLE10 when you visit CampingWorld.com. All right, welcome back, everybody. It's time for the RV questions of the week. And this one comes from Susan and Tom. And Susan and Tom say, we are new uh, to RVing and uh, we have been told not to use bleach to clean it. What do you use to clean your sinks, shower, and the toilet? Also, when we go to an RV campground, are you supposed to check out or can we just leave before the designated time? Thanks for all your help for us newbies, Susan and Tom. Well, I'll take the last part first. You just leave. When you're ready to leave, leave. If you were leaving, you know, like in the evening and you weren't going to spend the night, you might want to, if the desk is still open so that they could rent it to somebody else or the spot wasn't totally wasted, but no, you just get to leave. When you're ready, just leave. And they'll kind of be driving through because they want to sweep up or tidy up the spot for the next person. And as far as what I use to clean things, I use the wipes. Clorox, Clorox wipes. Clorox wipes. I have wiped things down with that for years. Now the toilet, I use the toilet bowl cleaner. Because we have a ceramic toilet, which and is what you should look for when you buy an RV, by the way. I think I'm going to ask when we get our new leisure. If they have something what else. What they suggest, because there's a lot of products out there that... Um, I'm sure are just as good. I kind of got into the Clorox wipes thing a lot with uh, COVID. You know, you wiped everything down a little bit with the bleach. So uh, that's a good question, and I'm going to pursue it. I never would use, you know, straight bleach. Uh, now, the one place you can use bleach, straight bleach, is in sanitizing your fresh water tanks. The problem is that so many people put too much bleach in 
just a little bit of bleach will you've got to then to get that bleach smell out you've got to fill it and empty it at least two or three times so you don't use much but a general rule if you're going to sanitize it at the start of the season or at the end of the season when you put it away is uh, one ounce for every eight gallons of water in uh, a full make sure that it's a full tank and then it helps to sometimes drive around a little bit let it shake around okay and now mike here's another question they say they've been enjoying uh, some of our videos and we appreciate them enjoying our videos and we just purchased a new unity 2022 they're going to be picking it up next week how exciting we plan to travel with our two smaller dogs and i'm so worried about leaving them in the rv what advice do you have thank you sandy and jeff and their puppies danny and lucy danny and lucy well you want to make sure that you know that danny and lucy are always comfortable in your rv uh, my first piece of advice is make sure that your dogs are used to the RV and are not barking or anxious when, you know, so they, they have to know that's home. That's their that's their kennel, their, their pack kennel when you guys are there, the whole pack. They have to be secure. So get them used to your RV, your brand new RV. Let them, you know, go out a couple of times. Let them, let them hang out and, and find their own little niches and space. I have to say, Bo is secure he knows this is his rv but when we walk off he wants to walk off with us he does too and it's he'll like stay next to impossible but to the not other, take him <laughs> the other thing the biggest concern you have is making sure it's not too hot um you know dogs can handle cold pretty good i don't know what kind of breeds you have with with uh, danny and lucy but uh cold can be a problem but that's why we use that waggle pet monitor it works on a cellular network you buy the unit and then you have to buy service for it um, but it uh, will then you can check it on demand with your smartphone or you can program in if the temperature gets above this or gets below this it sends you an immediate alert and you can then get back and take care of them so we really like that. Now, if you want, again, we remember we're giving one away. So just go to rvlifestyle.com slash sweepstakes and you can enter to win that, that Waggle pet monitor. Uh, or if you just want to get one with, and make sure you have it, uh, the, the neat thing about the Waggle, that giveaway, in, is that they have offered 50% off. you got to use our, our code, a, a coupon code, but you can get that information from rvlifestyle.com slash sweepstakes. And that 50% off is only good for... Uh, the two weeks that we're running this giveaway. Uh, but, but we're big fans of Waggle. It's a product that we used even before we heard about them. And, and because of that, uh, we, can, we can recommend it. And if you have a pet, you need to know how, how hot it is. You need that. It'll tell you if yeah. the temperature goes crazy. All right. That's the podcast for this week. Um, want to make sure that we hear from you. You've got a comment, anything we said. You have a question. you got some feedback. Just send us a, a note at uh, our private email. It's Mike and Jen at RVLifestyle.com. Mike and Jen at RVLifestyle.com. Now, i got to point out, sometimes businesses and services watch the podcast and they use that email to try and pitch me on something. I don't answer those if you send them. This is our private email that's just for followers and fans, uh, for questions and for us to interact with you. Um, there's other ways that they can get a hold of us through business contacts. But for, for you, Mike and Jen at RV Lifestyle Account, we love getting your feedback, your questions, and your comments. That's it for this week. We'll see you down the road. Happy trails.